but it is probably the best, the most well-rounded application, I think. It's fair to say. It doesn't have the flashiest GUI, um, but in terms of features, it's got everything I need, and a, a heck of a lot more besides. Right, so I've got my desktop up. <laughs> Nice. One of the um, fairly unique things about MythDB is that it's based on a client server architecture. So you can have, say, it's comprised of a front end and a back end. Uh, this could be a, a back end, so you wouldn't have to have a loud, ugly, big, noisy box <coughs> under your TV in the living room. You can have, you know, the, the back end in a, in a spare room somewhere where the, the noise isn't going to bother you. And in the front room under the TV, a nice, quiet, full power, discless front end, which looks pretty for under the TV. Right, so the back end part of Myth TV is running in the background all the time, recording your shows, handling the uh, file storage, and all of the schedule. And then here, this is the user interface, front end. Now obviously, if it was in the living room, you'd set it to start automatically, so you wouldn't have to mess around with uh, typing commands in on the console. So, this is the uh, main user interface, the menus that you see. Um, since last year, I've uh, actually gained commit access to, Myth, to the Myth TV project because I'm a, uh, I design GUI themes. So this is what I made called Bluetooth. Just, just make sure of this notification. Kind of hard because Myth TV hides the mouse pointer. So, you can do a number of things from the MacBook, well, you can do everything from the menus virtually. Got uh, recordings here. You can basically use it like a set top box. You can do all sorts of cool things. You can pause, rewind live TV, you can uh, skip adverts. Sadly, that doesn't work very well in the UK because of um, the way broadcasts, the way TV's broadcast, the adverts aren't very easy for the software to spot. That's more tail tailored towards um, the way it works in the US. But what you can do is skip by an arbitrary amount, so say uh, when the ad break comes, hit the number four, because ad breaks are typically four minutes long, four, and then jump ahead four minutes, and you magically skip past the advert. Now, uh, one of the really cool features that you won't get the benefit of here, because there's no audio, is the time stretch function. This lets you watch, say, an hour's show in less time without without it changing the pitch of the audio. So it sounds, you know, when you obviously when you speed up speech, sounds like the Pinky and Perky. But this lets you play back audio up to two. Sorry, lets you play back your TV up to two times faster. Oh, there is audio. Uh, the green. Management tends to look down on IT. Right, here we go. It tends to uh, the dark, speech, low brow, uh, populist, panning to the lowest common denominator in taste. Uh, one factor in this um, attitude is the prevalence of American imported series. Interesting. Well, I'm playing it 20% faster. American imports in the late 50s. And you can tell that the uh, actual key, the key of the, uh, the audio hasn't changed, and it's still intelligible. If your box has enough um, CPU power, you can play it up to two times faster and still just about make out what, what people say. Uh, my, my wife uses that at home and it lets her watch Emmerdale in like 15 minutes. <laughs> <laughs> and I'm very grateful for that. <laughs> so we get through about two hours of soap operas in an hour and a half, which is a big bonus for me. It's also got some. Um, a video manager, call this plugin Myth Video. You can uh, rip 
DVDs, download movie trailers, or play a nice promotional video. Here's something I prepared earlier. This is Myth TV, an open source personal video recorder. Yeah, that's been wrapping up about it. It's got um, an image gallery, so you can browse and kind of organise the photos and watch them in a in a slideshow. It's good for viewing family photo albums. It's got nifty uh, open GL transitions; they've been in there for a while. And of course. No TV record application would be complete without um, a program guide. In the UK we're very lucky because um, with Freeview and digital TV, the program guide is transmitted over the air, so we don't need an internet connection for that. And we get up to seven days free program, di program guide data for all the channels. <coughs> so you can browse through your guide, find out what's on. And if we go along, so we want to record today at Wimbledon. Press the record button. <coughs> see there. So a single record yeah. has a priority of plus one and it will record. Alternatively, you can edit the options for this. You can say, that'll only record it once. Or that'll find one, no matter what channel it's on, and record that. Record it in the same time slot every week. One showing of this title every week, and so on. Plenty of options. One of the big criticisms, and one of the main advantages about this TV actually, is that you can configure the living daylight out of it. But um, there is a project ongoing behind the scenes to possibly take a lot of the more advanced options away from the user and hide them behind the scenes a little bit. There's a plugin here called Myth Phone, which I can't demonstrate, and I'll be honest, I don't know how to use it. But that allows you to use um, SIP, Voice Over IP, and it, you can integrate that into, your, um, into a, a VoIP server at home and tie it in with caller ID so that if somebody phones you, the, you can have a message pop up on the USB while you're watching television and it tells you who's calling. We've got uh, an OSS newsfeed reader here, which in the next release version will be able to, uh, you'll be able to watch YouTube videos with it. And various other OSS newsfeeds that you can set up yourself. Uh, this, this is a new plugin with movie times that lets you uh, check local movie listings in real cinemas in your area. That's a weather plugin so you can check local weather forecasts. All the Netflix videos, and we've got a web browser here as well. And in the next version of Myth TV, which is going to be released sometime this year, I don't know exactly when, when it's ready probably, um, that's been enabled with Java now, so you can watch YouTube videos and video blogs and things like that in the web browser within the TV itself. And it's recently been integrated with um, Zone Minder CCTV, so you can check on all your Zone Minder home CCTV from your own chair as well, which is pretty cool. And of course, it wouldn't be complete without a DVD player. And you can play and rip DVDs with this. Let's plug it. I think that's about it. Thank you. Okay, I'm just say thank you very much for Jasky. I would try and track Joe Shaw's attention because obviously he's still writing his presentation. Uh, 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 we are Joe's not on next. <laughs> <laughs>